All right. So, um, top three order of importance for your business. Okay. Like I said, it starts with setting up your business calendar. So, however you want to do it. Um, I have a couple of methods. Like I said, I have my planner. I have um, my three-month calendar. That way I can see where I'm at in a couple months ahead um, that I have in my office cubby thing that I wish I would say is up to date, but I haven't been using it, so I wouldn't 1,000% recommend that tool because obviously I don't use it. Or, or it could be a great tool for somebody. Um, it might work if I opened up my cabinet, but right now I have a huge pile of clean laundry blocking it, so that doesn't help me. Um, when setting up your business calendar each month, um, you should plan um, office hours for your customers and your team. Um, this is this way you're setting strong boundaries for your customers and your team, and you're not expected to be available all the time. Um, I would say that this is super duper important, um, especially with your customers. Like I'm, I'm here for you guys pretty much all the time, and when I'm not, I just don't answer. <laughs> so if I don't answer, then I'm probably working or I am sleeping, but that the rest of the time, or I'm doing family time. Um, but as soon as I can get back to you and I'm back in my office hours, then um, that I do. I don't have like set hours for y'all. But for my customers, I have had to because um, I have, um, hold on, Alex is messaging me. <laughs> Her phone is being a piece of shit. I'll catch the recording, good night. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so, um, but with my customers, I have some that, you know, that do work shift work or they are night owls and um, because at the time I was an incredible night owl and I've had to train myself to go back to sleep, my, my sleep debt and deficit was just ridiculous. Um, and it was really affecting my health, so I had to force myself, another thing that I've had to learn to do, um, I had to force myself to, to go back to sleep and to remember how important that is. Um, like so I had developed sleep apnea, I, was to, I had developed all these heart issues and all this stuff, and all of it was related back to my sleep habits. So, um, it, it affects more than you think. Um, but I had customers that, you know, just thought that I was supposed to answer at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning all the time, and you just can't do it. So um, set hours for yourself. Um, no, there's no bag emergency. Like, there, this, there really positively is nobody's going to die because they didn't get that purse. And nobody is going to keel over because they had to wait a couple hours to talk to you like it's not that serious in this age of feeling like you know we can get in contact with anybody and everybody all the time via text or Facebook or whatever you have to remember it's your life and you're only going to be as accessible as you allow yourself to be so um, I would highly suggest setting up a, a cutoff hour for you um, nine times out of 10, mine is usually around 10 o'clock at night where I'm just like, I'm done. If you haven't talked to me, um, an hour after my son goes to bed, then you don't need to talk to me because it's late and I don't want to talk to anybody else at this point. I'm trying to power down and prepare myself to go to sleep. Um, you know, or I'm getting, you know, last minute, you know, of my own office stuff done. So pick something that works for you, but um, I, that, that is something that I would highly suggest is setting up um, office hours for yourself. Um, da -da 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 -da. Where I left off, I don't know. Um, okay, so this is, a strong, this is uh, your way of setting strong boundaries for both your customers and your team, so you aren't expected to be available, um, always uh, be available. This 
is the number one challenge for when you ladies become um, leaders. Um, this is, and I, and I agree, is the number one challenge with team leadership. The leader doesn't set boundaries and expectations, so they end up feeling frustrated and overwhelmed. Um, and that's why I had to start doing it, because it was like, you know, and, and my, my hours are probably later because I know I have some West Coast girls. And so what is normal time for them is like way past my bedtime. Um, so sometimes and occasionally I will, you know, answer a little bit later for them. But nine, uh, now nine times out of ten, they'll just have to wait until I message them in the morning and they see it and we'll just, you know, delay reaction back and forth unless it's um, like the last day. I'm a little, I'm more vigilant and open um, to whatever hour is on the last day of the month because I know that can be crazy. That's crazy for all of us if we're, you know, doing last minute orders. So on the 30th or 31st, I'm all yours all day. Just doesn't matter. Um, unless I'm putting my own damn order in and you just might have to wait a second. <laughs> um, okay. So, all right, your top three. You, well, it's all going to start with your business calendar. But your top three, it's really quite simple. And it's going to sound stupid simple when I say it. Number one is your parties. For all of us, that is our number one order of importance in your business. Parties are the key foundation pieces to your business. Without them, you don't have a job. Right? Um, so your party dates need to be your first priority um, for your business when you're setting up your calendar each month. Even if you are doing less parties because you've grown a bigger team, it doesn't matter. They still need to go into your calendar first. This way, you don't end up getting too busy to book parties because that doesn't work for our business, right? You can't be too busy to book parties because the parties are your business. Um, and okay, so you don't end up being uh, too busy to book parties and cause yourself a lot of stress when it comes to meeting the minimums. Now, we work and book our, our business to try and exceed the minimum so we don't have to worry about it, right? Um, but if you don't book your own parties, then all of that becomes a struggle. I see sangria being made. Yay. <laughs> um, I just got thirsty. Okay. Recruiting. That's number two. Constantly recruiting is a vital aspect of leadership. If you aren't recruiting, your team isn't growing and you aren't promoting. So the second priority for your business, whether you're a leader or going to be a leader, um, and Jennifer, you've already got people under you, so yay. Um, I know you've got Jennifer under you right now, right? Or is that Sus? I'm confused. I don't remember. And so that's poor leadership. Yeah. I uh, no, no, I've got Susan under me. You've got Susan under you. Okay. Um, and, but she's going through some stuff right now, right? She really is, and I don't know if she's going to be active, like, you know. It's okay. It's all right. It happens. Um, it happens. It's happened to me twice. It, yeah. It happens to me all the time. And that and that's just a key, um, and it's a great lesson to learn early on, is we, if you remember this in your side note here, um, a third, a third, a third. That's how I have to remember my recruiting. There is always a third coming into our business. There's always a third working their business. And there is always a third on their way out. Right. So some people, you know, they, they join the business and whether it's just for the kit or whether they came in and life happened, they, you know, came in and then they go into the, the way out um, category. Um, and some people are here to stay. But the only way that you can keep the balance going um, so that your team is still continuously working for you and, and growing is to continue to recruit, to fill in for those that are on their way out. 
So, um, so don't stress it. Don't worry about it. Timing just isn't right right now for her. That doesn't mean it won't ever be right. But, you know, things happen. Life happens to, for all of us. Um, so don't stress it. Just keep recruiting. Um, and that's one of the, one of the postings that I put in there. Um, I think it was like July's or something. It was talking about recruiting and that you shouldn't recruit unless you're good at this, this, and this. And I totally disagree with that page. What's so, you know, 100%. Um, I, that just doesn't, that's, that's not how our business model is, is built. Our business model is built to start building your team, you know, from the get go, because your other leaders, your upline, are there to help you and help them. Um, so I would just 100, I think it's July. Just disregard July. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> but okay, so recruiting. Recruiting is vital. Um, bah, 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 bah. So the second priority of your business when you're setting up your calendar should be scheduling available slots for recruiting interviews and new recruit training. Recruiting interviews, that's just meeting meeting up with your with the girls who have talked about wanting to join your team or setting up like zoom calls or setting up you know phone calls or, or stuff like that um i don't really interview if they want to join they want to join if they don't they don't um if they don't then i'll try and find out what it is that you know is preventing them from doing it and same with my hostesses you know we overcome those objections and um, try and settle that fear and then go from there. And, you know, either they want, in the end, either they want to or they don't. Um, but, okay, and new recruiting training. And your upline takes care of a lot of that right now. Um, I try to do these um, Zoom calls and, um, and I honestly, I was doing all these calls because our 31 minute calls went away when we um, redid our um, TOT. Um, but now that TOT is coming back, or the 31 calls are coming back, I'm really excited. But I still like doing these calls because teaching is one of one of my, you know, fortes. It's something that I enjoy doing. I enjoy coming to y'all and, you know, brainstorming with you and hopefully am, am helping um, and not confusing the hell out of you. Um, but, um, so that's, that's one of the things I enjoy doing. So even with the 31 minute calls coming, um, I still plan on doing these, um, and posting them because I, I enjoy doing it, but okay. Um, see so getting your recruits trained in the first six weeks is the key to their success and yours. These appointments should be scheduled like parties. They should not happen during your, and should not happen during your office hours. These times should be blocked out specifically for recruiting interviews and, and new recruit training. And now, of course, this is going to mean some juggling until you can create a balance um, that you want between running your personal business and leading your team. And that's, that's just something that we all have to remember as you, as you do move into leading is even as a leader, you know, you have your team and you have all this stuff. But you also still have your personal business. So as much as I, um, I pour into y'all and want to encourage and celebrate everything that you guys are doing, I have to remember that I still have parties I have to do because I still have my own personal. Oh, there's a kitty. <laughs> I still have um, my personal business. So um, as, you, as you do that, just don't forget um, and pour into um, – your girls so much and lose track of that time. And that's basically all she's saying is to, to schedule them separately because you still have to work your business and then you have to help your girls, but you can't help your girls if you lose your status of being a leader because you forgot to work your business. That makes sense. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. And then leading, that's the number three part is leading. This would be the time that you have blocked out for leading your team. So during your team office hours, you should be answering team questions, running your monthly team meetings or trainings, 
And just like party dates and recruiting, you should be blocking out this time in your calendar. This way your team can expect to have your support consistently and then know when you are available for that support. Um, and then when you implement all three of these um, top three, uh, what was the thing, what is this called? Um, something of importance, anyways. Um, your business will be consistently growing, recruiting, leading, and you won't be running around like a chicken with your head cut off. She really likes that part. Um, what I do want to say about this, like I said, this, this portion is shorter, um, but I don't want it to scare you and think, okay, you've got, you know, to build time for your parties, obviously, and then you have to build time for um, recruiting and time for your leading. Um, and that it's going to take up all of your days. It really doesn't. And that's when you figure out that you don't have to be online 24 hours a day and your business will still survive and it'll probably do better because you're not puking your business onto people 24 seven, then your life starts to fall into place. Like things when you realize and, and really block out the times and like I have to color code things, I have to see things. But when I see that, okay, I have work from this time to this time and then from this time to this time, I need to make my phone calls um, to my hostess, my hostess coaching. And then from this time to this time, um, Tony has football practice. And then from this time to this time, we have dinner and family time. And then from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock, I talk to my, you know, team, I, you know, bundle up my mailings and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, it, you know, and that changes depending on, you know, the activities of the day. But when you start breaking it down and realizing that you don't have to spend 24 seven in your Facebook group, um, life starts to, to ease up. And when you get into that routine and you, you train yourself, you, you know, you train yourself to look at your calendar and see what you have available. And it doesn't just look like a blundered mess. Um, you see that, you know, I really don't have shit going on between three and four o'clock on Tuesday. So maybe that's, you know, my me time, you know, or maybe that's, when I can get the groceries done or whatever. Um, but it, it starts, it starts to make sense. Um, so I hope that helps. And then, you know, I'll, I'll, in October, I'll post, you know, October's power tips or whatever. And then that way it's not like nine months of, of information coming at you in one thing. It'll, it'll start to filter and you have time to, to go and look through all those past ones. Um, but I hope this helps. Um, and if you have any questions or if you want to attend any of her free trainings, I highly recommend it. Um, I think I have her Facebook page. Um, but there are, what are you doing, Suki? Um, there are several people. And if you just do like a Facebook search for, you know, direct sales, coaching, or something like that. There's like 50,000 people out there that think that they are direct sales coaches. Um, and if you have extra time, I sign up for their, their free webinars, and I'll listen to it. And, and you can usually tell right off the bat if it's just, you know, if there's anything of importance there or if it sounds like they cut and paste from somebody else. It, like, you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, but I usually take at least a, a little nugget, you know, from different people and I can, you know, take from this and take from that and, and then, you know, find things that work for my business. Um, but Alicia, like I said, it took me, it's, it's taken me a good year to decide to, um, to actually invest money into this chick. Um, and it wasn't much. I think I spent like 20 bucks so far, <laughs> but um, it, it's, I don't know it's it's part of my own coaching to where like I've I've had to to switch to a business mindset and it, it's taken me a while because I did have a hobbyist mindset for a long time. Um, 
Hi, baby. Hi. I want to say good night. Good night. I love you. Love you too. Um, but uh, when we come into our business, everything is is taken care of. You know, we didn't have to file for business licenses. We didn't have to, um, you know, work out a budget or business, you know, plan. Um, if you've ever tried to open up your own business, uh, none of that's um, fun. Trust me. Um, trying to find finances, all that stuff, it's all done for you. Um, so really, um, for $99 to walk into a business that you can literally open up the box and, and run with, is it's not a lot of skin in the game. Um, and if, you know, if you were, uh, if well, none of you guys were, but um, when you join, you know, during that $1 thing, that's why the $1 thing scared me at first. I was like, you know, what's, you don't have any, you know, skin in the game. What is your incentive to, to do anything? But we have amazing girls doing amazing things because when I wrapped my head around it, that not everybody, you know, has that opportunity. And it's, you know, life is a real struggle sometimes. And for a dollar, that, like, opened up opportunities like crazy for people and that that's amazing and it is, is so good um but I know for me personally because I do work full-time and I do have a job and not that I don't struggle but you know I do have that other income to fall on um so in order to push myself and my business to do bigger you know and 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 move out of the hobbyist to the business mindset I had to put some skin in the game <laughs> um, to put me there. And so that's why, and, but it's only a little skin for right now. <laughs> but um, so, so I, I took the step and like I said, I, I watched her for a year and, um, and listened to her and something, sometimes she would just annoy me and I would just, you know, stop listening. And um, sometimes the emails got to be too much and I was like, I'm done, you know, with the spamming thing. Um, and then, other times I would, you know, click on it and I go, oh yeah, she kind of knows what she's talking about. Um, <laughs> and it makes sense. Um, and I got over, you know, I actually, in instead of being put off by, you know, some of her um, brashness and um, just straight to the point, she, she just gets raw sometimes. Um, I just embraced it and realized that that's kind of the person I am. And I think that's what I was um, why I was button against it is, you know, I'm not always, um, as PC as I could be in business, um, and in the leadership, but, um, you know, she, she really basically, you know, one of the very first things she says, oh, let me share this. One of the very first things she said to, um, to us for any of us, um, was to, you know, Check your shit at the door, basically. So when you go to do your parties and, you know, if, if you're having a shit day and you go into your parties and you go in with that attitude and you go, you know, going in with the woe is me and my life is so terrible and this and this and this and this and this, and this is going on, then that's the type of party you have. Um, nobody, you know, we, the whole basis to our our business our whole business model is built on bringing the fun <laughs> so when we when you're expecting the fun and expecting the party and, and your hostesses pull her friends together and um, clean up their house and open it up for a couple of hours when they could have been doing their own cuddle time with their husbands um, then you don't bring the fun that's disappointing for everybody. So like that was her number one tip for everybody was life happens. Sometimes it sucks, but when you go to party, check the shit at the door, leave it in the car and go bring the fun. And so, um, when I finally heard her words and then just like brush over them, when I finally heard them, I was like, okay, so this is the kind of chick I need in my life is to tell me to shut the hell up, check the shit and let's go. <laughs> and, um, 
And so ever since then, I've just kind of, I've been listening to all their videos and everything, and I, I love it. Um, but, um, but in order to do any of the more trainings, I have to earn some extra cash um, to have uh, for petty cash to, to invest in, into myself there. So um, I know that that's not uh, uh, feasible for everybody, so that's why I'm sharing it. So whatever I come through and I am learning as we go, um, and if I you know get any bright ideas from everything that I learned from her, then I just pour it down to y'all, um, and we'll go from there. Um, so anyways, I hope uh, all of that was a lot of information, um, but uh, I hope it helps. And if it does, then yay. Now implement it. Um, don't just listen to it. That's the key right there. Don't just listen to it. You have to do it. Take action on it now. So start tomorrow. Start tonight. Start whenever. Um, but don't say I'll start on Monday because <laughs> then Monday rolls around and then next thing you know, it's I'll start next Monday. And so do it now. Um, pick a book. If you need book recommendations, let me know. I've got some for you. Like I've got some amazing, empowering, business minded, um, self-help, just amazing books and I highly recommend I highly recommend the one that Cindy um, is 100% in love with and has really changed you know molded our business off of um, or has been inspired off of that and that's the traveler's gift by Andy Andrews I is such an easy read It's so easy to get wrapped up it's so hard to keep it in 15 minutes let me just tell you because I want to sit there and read it um, all the time. But The Traveler's Gift by Andy Andrews, um, I just sent it to my um, ex-mother-in-law, actually, um, because it's such an inspiring book. Um, so I highly recommend that one. So if you need a book to start with, that's it. Um, and I think it's like $12 on Amazon or something like that. Um, so... Whatever it is that you need to do to start, you know, even if it's just taking this, you know, the recording and going through it again and, and taking notes and outlining it, whatever you need, because um, that's how I work. I have to outline things and then I have to put it into thing and then I implement it and, you know, I have my steps, but it gets done. Um, so that's the key is take all this information, pick out what works for you or try it all. That's my recommendation. Try it all and then figure out what doesn't work for you and then take that away um, instead of just assuming that it doesn't work for you. But um, I would try it all, give it a good try, not a one try, but give it a good try. Um, give yourself a month. I think that's a, a good testing you know um time is try it for a month and then if it doesn't work or if parts of it just doesn't fit for you take it out but continue on with the rest of it um until you find something that works for you and then you can plug in things that work for they you do glow. they do glow yeah oh yay i bought this stuff for our camping thing um oh can you grab one and we can like do show and tell yay um <laughs> I'm gonna start. I'm gonna stop recording this part though, because this has absolutely nothing to do with that. Okay. <laughs>